Hi, my name is Melissa van Dijk and this video is about the ordinary lactic acid 5 and 10% and what you can and cannot combine when including one of them in your skincare routine. Now before I'm getting started with my examples, I do want to also mention and really emphasize that you only should choose one of the ordinary lactic acids. Maybe if you're new to lactic acid, you never have tried it before, you may want to go with the 5% to also see how your skin is going to respond to it. However, if you're also a little bit more advanced when it comes to leave on exfoliating acids, you may want to choose the ordinary 10%, but please do not use them together. And this also brings me immediately to my first example that I want to share with you on how you should not combine your lactic acid. And this is also, please do not use your lactic acid with other strong leave-on exfoliating acids that the ordinary has. Such as, for example, do not combine it with glycolic acid or with salicylic acid or with mandelic acid in the same routine. Since those are all leave-on exfoliating acids that can already irritate the skin if you may combine it with lactic acid in the same routine. Since those are all exfoliating acids that are going to exfoliate your skin. So to also avoid any skin irritation, but still also get the most out of your products, I do not recommend combining them. Now another example that I want to share with you is also do not use the ordinary lactic acid 5 or 10% with the ordinary peeling solution or salicylic acid mask. Now the peeling solution includes 30% of AHA, most of it is glycolic acid as well as also a little bit of lactic acid and then also 2% of BHA which is salicylic acid. And then you also have the 2% salicylic acid mask, which by the name it already tells you that it includes 2% of salicylic acid in it. So please do not use when using your peeling solution once or twice per week in your evening skincare routine, do not use lactic acid afterwards. Since this can also cause severe skin irritation depending also on the sensitivity of your skin since you have already exfoliated your skin with the mask, so there's no need to exfoliate it again. So therefore, when using the peeling solution, keep it simple, just add hydration afterwards, and that's basically it, to also will get most out of it. Now, I do also want to talk about a topic that where I did notice that some people also have asked a question, like if I'm using that specific cleanser, can I use it while also using lactic acid or any of the other leave-on exfoliating acids from the ordinary? And this is specifically also focused on those um, like exfoliating acid cleansers that already specifically mention on the bottle that it either includes 2% of salicylic acid or maybe a certain amount of glycolic acid or lactic acid in it, or such as, for example, the SkinCeuticals has also quite of a stronger acid combination going on of 12%. So this would be even higher than a lactic acid 5 or 10%. So when using lactic acid 5 or 10%, please avoid using a high percentage um, like exfoliating acid cleanser, such as, for example, the Inkis list, as I gave you right here. Do not combine them in the same routine. It would be like um, you would exfoliate your skin twice. Now, I'm not saying that it's completely forbidden, but to avoid skin irritation, depending also on the tolerance and sensitivity of your skin, this can already cause skin irritation. So therefore, I recommend using a gentle cleanser instead, such as, for example, the ordinary squalane cleanser and then use your lactic acid afterwards. That's an amazing combination since the ordinary squalane cleanser doesn't include any high percentages of acids. This is a very, very gentle cleanser. And therefore, please, if you can see that it specifically tells you how much the percentage is on your cleanser when it comes to the exfoliating acids, AHA or BHA, do not use it in the same routine with any of the other leave-on exfoliating acids to avoid skin irritation. Now I want to talk about a combination that you also should avoid to get most out of your peptides. And uh, this is also one of the conflicts which you can also find on the Ordinary website under their regime and guide. You also will see that when using the ordinary lactic acid 5 or 10% of any of the other leave-on exfoliating acids as well as the peeling solution and salicylic acid, it's not recommended to use the peptides in the same routine. 
So if you want to get most out of your peptide serum that you probably have already at home, keep them separate. Do not combine them in the same routine. And I gave you here an example that you should not combine the ordinary buffet with lactic acid as well as also the other like peptides that the ordinary currently has. However, if you want to use both, let's say you have lactic acid and buffet at home, you may want to try and use them in separate routines like use buffet in the morning and your lactic acid in the evening. That's totally fine as long as you're not going to combine them in the same routine. That's all what counts, but you can use them in separate routines. And now I also want to talk about a specific topic, which is also the ordinary niacinamide powder. Now, please do not mix the ordinary 100% niacinamide powder with the ordinary lactic acid 5 or 10%. That's also really important to also keep in mind. And there's also another combination that I want to talk about and I recommend that you also should avoid combining them in the same routine to mainly avoid skin irritation. This is not like an, that you can't combine them in the same routine. It's not wrong when using them in the same routine, but it's more like what your skin can actually tolerate. So if you aren't sure or if you're new to skincare in general, I recommend not using the ordinary lactic acid 5 or 10% together with any of the ordinary retinoids or their retinols. Please keep them separate. You may want to use them at alternate nights. Especially if you're new to the ordinary retinoids or retinols, you may want to use them two to three times per week, both of them, but you're going to use them at alternate times. So let's say on Monday you're going to use lactic acid, on Tuesday, you're going to use your retinoid or retinol, leaving out lactic acid and so on and so on to avoid skin irritation since you're probably new to both products. So you don't know how your skin would react when combining them. Plus, this way you're also able to build up the skin tolerance so that your skin can also adjust to those new products, but still also get most out of them since you keep on going with them, like using it on one day, then take one day off, replace it with another product, etc. So this way you're not missing out on both products, you still can use them, but just use them at alternate times. So this is also one recommendation that I can also uh, give you that you also should avoid combining them in the same routine. Now another combination that I also want to recommend avoiding, not because it can uh, neutralize each other or because it can um, make one thing weaker than the other thing. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking specifically about avoiding skin irritation. So when using the ordinary vitamin C's, to be more specific, the pure or ethylated forms of vitamin C, please do not use them in the same routine when using lactic acid 5 or 10%, since it may cause skin irritation depending also on your skin tolerance. Some people can use them together in the same routine if they have fairly good tolerance, if they have healthy skin, if they have no damaged skin barrier whatsoever, they can combine them. It's not wrong to combine them, However, if you are not sure how your skin is going to respond to it, I recommend keeping them separate and using them at alternate routines or days so that you still will get most out of it, but then also make sure that you're not like, experiencing a skin irritation. So in this example, you could, for example, go ahead and use your pure ethylated form of vitamin C in the morning, don't forget your sunscreen, and in the evening you would use lactic acid. So this way you will still get both out of each product, what it also can help you with your skin concerns, but you're also making sure that you're not experiencing skin irritation. So therefore it is also really important to think about your skin and say, well, I'm pretty new to skincare. I have no idea if my skin is going to react well to it or if I will end up with skin irritation. So to play it safe, I'm going to use them in different routines or alternate nights if I want to use both in the evening. But this is personal preference if you want to use them in separate routines when it comes to vitamin C and your lactic acid. However, with retinoid and with your retinol, please always keep them in the evening and don't forget your sunscreen during the day. And maybe the more you are getting used to the products and maybe the more you are experienced and like getting the experience when it comes to skincare products and combining them, at the end of the day, you may be able to also use them in the same routine. I just wouldn't recommend it if you're new to it and you have no idea how your skin is going to react. So that's my advice that I also can share with you. 
Now, another combination that I recommend avoiding is also using the ordinary lactic acid 5 or 10 percent with the ordinary EUK134. Please do not use them in the same routine. This can be a very strong combination. And when using lactic acid and EUK, I recommend that using, for example, EUK in the morning and lactic acid in the evening. Again, because the combination can be quite strong. Now I'm going to share with you with what you can also use lactic acid 5 and 10% to also have no irritation, to also make sure that the combination works well for your skin as well as also for your skin concerns. Now please make sure to always pick the products when it comes to the ordinary line based on your skin concerns to also see skin improvements. Now you are fine to also use the ordinary lactic acid 5 and 10% with the ordinary hydrators and oils, which in, can be any of the ordinary oils, depending also on your preference, you can also play around with them, and also the amino acids, hyaluronic acid, marine hyaluronics, and then natural moisturizing factors. You are fine to combine them in the same routine when using lactic acid. There's no issue, there are no conflicts, it can be actually really beneficial since lactic acid can also increase the hydration within your skin. So adding hydration afterwards can just be beneficial. And here you can also see an example routine. This could be an AM and or PM skincare routine depending also on your skin. It's more like a hydration a skincare routine for dry skin. When using lactic acid 5 or 10 percent, you can also use it in the morning. Just don't forget to use sunscreen afterwards since it can make your skin sensitive to the sun. However, I recommend using it mainly in the evening just to also avoid in general any sun exposure to make your skin sensitive. So this could be an AM and or PM skincare routine where you could also start off with your gentle cleanser. Again, choose a gentle cleanser. Move on to lactic acid 5 or 10%. Then you can, for example, use the ordinary amino acids. You could also replace it with hyaluronic acid. You could also um, use hyaluronic acid and the amino acids together. That's totally fine as well. And then finish it off with a moisturizer or maybe also a cream if you have a little bit more of drier skin, a thicker cream. And then in the morning, don't forget your sunscreen. So this is what a hydration routine could look like when also including lactic acid. Now I want to get into the category of more molecules, which also includes alpha-butin, caffeine solution, as well as niacinamide. And you are fine to use niacinamide with lactic acid. Niacinamide has, in this case, when it comes to the serums, no issues with any exfoliating acids. So you are fine to combine them. And here you can also see what the routine could look like. And again, you uh, start off with your cleanser, use your lactic acid, use your caffeine solution if you're suffering from dark circles, puffiness, if you like to. Move on to niacinamide, your moisturizer and sunscreen in the morning. This could also be a great anti-aging skincare routine when also using those products together. Now, when it comes to the ordinary antioxidants, UK is special, but you can still also use lactic acid in combination with pycnogenol as well as resveratrol and ferulic acid. And here's also an example routine on how you can also combine them. I want to keep it fairly simple with the example skincare routines, but as you can see in this example, you can see after the serum it says on hydro solution so they also have different like formulations which is also important so that you also know how you can properly layer them so basically go from the thinnest to the thickest texture and this is also how you can set up your skin routine when using pignogenol or resveratrol in your skin routine now we are going to talk about the ordinary vitamin C derivatives. Now currently the ordinary has three vitamin C derivatives, which also includes ascorbyl glucoside solution, ascorbyl tetraisopalmitate solution in vitamin F, as well as magnesium ascorbyl phosphate. Now they have all different formulations, so therefore I want to give you an example on how we could properly layer them and also in what order. Starting off, with the ordinary ascorbic glucoside solution, which is a water-based vitamin C derivative serum. And you can use it after lactic acid and then also use it before your moisturizer. So this could be one routine. 
Then if you want to go over um, the vitamin, uh, like the vitamin C derivative, which is also an oil, then it also would look a little bit different. So it's important that you also keep the formulations in mind. But still, you can combine it also with lactic acid 5 or 10%. And again, in the morning, don't forget your sunscreen. If you're using it in the evening, there's no sunscreen needed. And then I also have the magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, which is currently out of stock. But when it's back in stock, it still also, also is important to know how you can properly layer the different products. Now again, you're going to start off with your cleanser, use lactic acid, then use the ordinary magnesium ascorbyl phosphate emulsion afterwards. And then using a moisturizer is optional, but using sunscreen in the morning is not optional. So please keep this in mind. Now I want to talk about a very interesting topic, which also did pop up under my comment section quite a lot. And um, I want to talk about it to also make um, or like give you a little bit more of a better understanding that you can use certain cleansers with lactic acid which are marketed as acid cleansers but they do not include a strong percentage of acids. So therefore sometimes it is alright to also use an acid cleanser as long as it doesn't include any high percentages. And I want to give you an example right here with a salicylic acid cleanser that is marketed as low pH good morning gel cleanser by Quarks. And you can use this cleanser with the ordinary lactic acid 5 or 10%. That's fine because it doesn't really include strong percentages of acids. So you have the same with the CeraVe as a cleanser. It doesn't mention a percentage on the bottle, so it's more like a guessing game. How much is in it? Is there anything in it? But then you have also, for example, the Cork Salicylic Acid Daily Gentle Cleanser, which mentions on the bottle that it only includes 0.5 of salicylic acid in it, which is pretty low since salicylic acid, if you're going to use it as an exfoliating acid to also be effective, which can also be effective for acne, then it's usually around the 2% mark. So 0.5 is pretty low and therefore you're fine to also combine it with ordinary lactic acid 5 or 10%. But to make sure that you're not getting confused, I generally just recommend that when using a leave-on exfoliant in your skincare routine, just use a gentle cleanser instead. Then you don't have to think about it. Well, can I use it or should I avoid it? So this is kind of like where marketing talks bigger or tries to talk bigger than it actually is. Since um, some of the products do not have enough uh, of those exfoliating acids in it to be effective. So therefore you have to make a difference and to keep it just as simple as possible, I generally just recommend use a gentle cleanser when using any of the ordinary leave-on exfoliating acids or also their AHA or BHA masks. So that you also have something in mind that you just can simplify. It doesn't have to be complicated. And I want to give you again an example to what the Cox low pH is and also the CeraVe cleanser. Um, to what the Inkis List or the La Roche-Posay or SkinCeuticals LHA cleanser is. Those have specifically percentages which are marketed on the bottle or on the back of the packaging where they specifically tell you, well, hey, if you're using this cleanser, there's 2% of salicylic acid in it. Um, so therefore, if you can see a specific number written on the packaging, because with 2% they kind of have to put it on to let people know that it can be effective, then there's no need to use an other exfoliating acid afterwards, because then this can also, on the other hand, lead to skin irritation. So therefore, it is important to keep in mind with certain brands, you can use it with lactic acid or any of the other leave-on exfoliating acids where there's no percentage mentioned. However, with cleansers that specifically tell you what's in it, please do not use it in the same routine when using the ordinary lactic acid 5 or 10% to just avoid skin irritation. And then also generally speaking, I recommend um, people in my comment section as well as in the group to always keep 
one gentle cleanser ready or like handy at home as well as also one uh, like salicylic acid or glycolic acid cleanser at home if they want to switch it because if you are starting off with a fairly simple routine you are not using any of the leave-on exfoliating acids you are fine to use a stronger acidic cleanser because it would be the same it exfoliates the skin so you could keep the rest of your skincare routine simple but you're still using a cleanser with salicylic acid for example in it which has also two percent of it in it so therefore there's no need to use a leave-on exfoliating acid however if over time your skincare routine may change it's best to always have a gentle cleanser at home to also avoid skin irritation especially if you're new to a product and you don't know how it's going to perform on your skin so those are at, like those are my experience as well as my advice that I can share with you to also keep it simple and to avoid any skin irritation. Now I do also hope that you enjoyed this video, that this one was helpful, that you now know how you can include lactic acid in your skincare routine. However, if you want to know more about how you can set up a specific skincare routine, as well as if you want to see the specific application of lactic acid also on my face and also how I can give you an example routine afterwards, please also check the videos out after this video right here, where I'm also going to go in depth into those two topics as well. Now, if you like this video, please don't forget to give the thumbs up as well as share it. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon in the next one. Happy skin caring. Bye.